Uh, hello, Taiwan. Uh, my name is Tony Kim. I'm the lead manager and head of the global technology team, uh, run the global tech sector for BlackRock. Um, I've been doing this over 25 years and I'm, uh, I'm based in uh, San Francisco. Hello, Before we dive into those more serious topics, maybe we can start with something lighter. So, I know you've been coming to Taiwan almost every year for over a decade. And you've probably tried quite a few different Taiwan foods and drinks, right? So, which one of the following is your favorite, or which one would you like to try? Okay, I would choose B, Cavalon whiskey. Um, I'm not into sweet drinks, and I prefer whiskey to beer, so I'll try the whiskey. Well, good choice. Yeah. And Cavalon has made its mark globally, and you should you know, get a bottle at the duty free later. It sounds great. That's great, great. I'll, I'll try that. <laughs> So speaking of um, local lifestyle, when you have some downtime in the evening, uh, what kind of activity would you go for? Well, uh, I'm not much of a singer. Um, I get seasick, so I will, <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the night market. Which type of the AI application from those Hollywood movies do you think will become reality first? So I would say C first, then, then A, then B. And uh, the actual one that I, when I grew up, the one that inspired me the most was actually HAL, HAL 9000 oh. in the movie 2001 Space Odyssey. I see, I like that movie as well. Yeah, yeah. The, let's start with the first question, the premise, is this a bubble, is there a long duration to this, to this idea? Um, there have been many technology waves, uh, if you look back the last 50 years, every 10 years or so, there has been a, 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 a market change. Uh, PC, server, smartphone, you know, internet, cloud. You know, these are all the, the last big cycles. And um, every time something like that happens, uh, you, you see a, a surge, you see new companies created, and then they generally run for at least a decade. Of course, you can have near-term bubbles. Uh, things can go, move up and down gradually. Um, but this one is bigger than the other five. <laughs> uh, it might be bigger than all five combined. And um, in fact, we're right now seeing the biggest investment cycle in human history. Okay, and, and maybe one of the reasons why this one is bigger than all of those prior technology waves is uh, at its core, it is about building intelligence versus building productivity or efficiency tools and then what you do with that intelligence is quite different and and so the the open-ended nature of what this could avail is quite different than the prior cycles and so in, in this regard i think we are in the early stages of this so the next question is where <clears throat> are the investment opportunities we look at this sector in three think of a layer cake the first layer is this uh, infrastructure layer. And this is the physical assets, the, the power, the data center, the buildings, um, uh, the chips. And then you run that as a cloud service. So that is uh, all that physical infrastructure. And this year there'll be over half a trillion dollars spent on building that. And um, so that's already half of the world's GDP, half, one half of a percent of a GDP. This will continue to grow. And the reason this grows is because this physical layer, these are AI factories. You know, in, in prior we had car plants, energy facilities, utility grids, and now we're building AI factories. The AI factories give birth to the second layer the second layer. And the second layer is the intelligence. So you need to give birth to an intelligence, the AI model, the LLM. Uh, we need to build this infrastructure. So the reason we're spending so much money is to give birth to the intelligence. And this intelligence, these models, um, 
are getting smarter five, 10 times per year. So you have these AI factories. The AI factories builds the, the intelligence. The intelligence then create these things called tokens. And these tokens have units of intelligence. We take the intelligence and then we put them inside an application, in robots, in cars, or you know, even replacing various services. And that's that top layer. It's the applications and the services. If you think about those three layers, and then you say, well, today's AI is the equivalent of a college or a master student, but in the next five years, we can have super intelligence or PhD, Nobel Prize capability. What do we do with that intelligence? This is the biggest question mark. What happens to what we, what we determine as these applications? All of what we think is software, this idea will totally change. And then what happens to services, labor, jobs? That will change. And so the bottom two layers will help define the complete reimagination of that top layer. So again, back to those three layers at the bottom layer that this chip foundry, there's a whole supply chain and uh, companies that design the chip, companies that manufacture the chip. Taiwan's strength is of course in the manufacturing of the chips. Um, there is some design capability and, and then there are all this uh, other Byzantine layer of supply chain providers. And um, Taiwan is in a great position. Obviously, they have very strong position here. The, the, the thing about this bottom layer, it requires so much capex. And so it's $500 billion today. It will easily be over a trillion in the next couple of years. So this market continues to grow. Their competitive position is very strong. You don't see new companies coming into this. So Taiwan is set to really benefit for a long time at the bottom of this layer. There is a dichotomy in that these companies are spending more the returns in the near term are not matching the investment. So actually their, their, their free cash flow is getting worse because they're spending so much CapEx and they're not getting the immediate return. But what, they are, what these big giants are playing for, they're not playing for the near term immediate return and cash flow today. They're, they're, they're playing for a bigger price. Uh, there's a race to get to this super intelligence, this artificial general intelligence. And um, if you do not invest, you then sacrifice your future. And what, in technology, what happens is if you fall behind, you die. So do you want to die or do you want to live? And, and this is really, at the end of the day, that's what is driving the motivation. And so that's why you see a mismatch maybe in the near term between the returns of this investment versus the profitability of cash flow. But the prize is that they're going to win. And, and it's not also amongst each other. Half of the world's GDP is services, labor. And the other half is all goods and services. And if tech AI can grab more of that percentage of, of the services and of the applications, that is the prize. At the bottom layer, this infrastructure compute, it's so capital intensive, hundreds of billions of dollars required just to play the game, which means that the number of companies that are competing here are few. And so there will not be, in my opinion, radical dislocations here. So we've established our bets there. And there's a few, and those giant winners, went big. the big keep winning down there. In this middle layer, this is where there is actually, it is both the new, these new, the best foundation models, they will go public very soon. And they will represent a new, and let's call it a new max up. And then, uh, so there will be opportunity for new companies at that middle layer to, to emerge. You need really very, very well capitalized competitive companies to compete at the middle layer. And so we've made those, we've identified who those are. And then at the top layer, there's again, the application and services layer, there are thousands of companies. And here, there will be new companies and there will be turnover. There will be winners and losers. And this is where we are 
where we're, uh, we're expressing a lot of uh, judgment as to who those will be. But at the bottom layer, we kind of know. This is how we do the portfolio construction. And uh, we'll say one more thing about AI. Um, the rate of change is so quick, faster than we've ever seen. And so what we perceive to be companies that are safe today might not be safe tomorrow. And, and so we need to be adaptive, especially flexible, especially at that top layer of the stack. You know, I've been doing this over 25 years, so I've seen several regimes. I, I look at, for most, let's say in any given 10 year period, nine years are pretty normal. 2000, dot com, financial crisis, COVID. In those three periods, you have what I call a, 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 a regime change of risk. And they generally last one year. The other periods in general, even though there's lots of macro up and down, um, I think tech just compounds. Tech compounds because the innovation and growth outgrows every other sector in, in the world. What I found I need to do is uh, in those periods, those black swan events, once every 10 years, you gotta move quickly. And, 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 but in, in, in many respects, it's for a relatively, it's for that year, it's for that short period of time. But in, in between, there is what I call this constant cadence of tech is driving the growth. If you look at the economy today, and GDP globally two or 3%, right? And um, tech is outgrowing that two to one at least. And so that's because innovation drives GDP. And, and then where is the innovation being centered? And if you, I, I look at the market today, the, the bulk of the growth is coming out of this AI investment. US-China tech competition has been going on for a decade. Has that had any impact on the S&P tech? No. Uh, this is a persistent reality. That's the new reality. This was the reality 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago today, it will even be more of, a, of the reality the next few years. And, and, and as I see it, again, um, if tech and innovation are driving global GDP, and you have two of the biggest countries in the world, US and China, they're not going away. And their sovereignty, in many respects, is tied to technology. And so it's not as if we can deprive China from all of these capabilities as just the same as we can deprive the United States or Japan or other countries. It is a part of the national security and sovereignty fabric. Every country that wants to be an information driven led company must participate. And so therefore they will continue to invest. This is why I believe regardless of geopolitics, regardless of macro, if innovation drives GDP growth, and if your country wants to grow, you will invest in technology. And, and over time, it, ha it, it, it will become and continue to be the, the biggest sector in the world. And you know, I look back 30 years ago, tech was 9% of the S&P. Today it's 43. Well, we have, um, in terms of risk management, we have external, third, um, external teams that we work with uh, measurements of risk, risk, uh, uh, active risk. We have obviously lots of internal risk measurements. The portfolio, we're, we're watching that all times. Um, but like I said, uh, my observation is decisive large changes need to be made if and when we believe there is a black swan kind of regime change. All three, yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're trying to make a judgment as who wins, who loses. <laughs> and AI is going to create new winners and new losers. The history has been that there will always be new companies. And, and so we, we can't sit and, and, and think that the existing winners will continue to win. So we're making ju judgments across all of, the, all of the things you just mentioned. Well, we have investments in quantum. I have one, one large investment in the leading photon and quantum computer in the private side. So we are betting there. Um, you know, we're evaluating things in um, next generation semiconductor. 
uh, the next generation uh, energy, like fusion energy. Um, I, you mentioned robotics and autonomous driving. Um, we have investments there, but that I call that part of AI. We will have new kinds of models for the physical world. For, for, uh, so we have investments in defense. So for example, uh, next generation military is going all AI. All of the war, you know, the warfare are drones and, 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 and humanoids. That's physical embodiment of intelligence. Self-driving car is just a giant robot with wheels. That's also another form of intelligence. And then we also have investments. We're looking at bringing that, again, that intelligence into chemistry, biology, drugs, medical. And so all of these are extensions on top of AI and then very new things like quantum and fusion and um, next generation chip manufacturing design. These are adjacent on top of. And, 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 and so, uh, yeah, we're looking at all of those things. I think in the next five years, we'll see a level of innovation that we've probably never seen. 最后，再次感谢各位今天的收看。未来我们国泰世华银行也会持续与各位分享最新的投资趋势与观点。我们下次见喽，拜拜。投资一定有风险，基金投资有赚有赔，申购前应详阅投资人须知或公开说明书。